don't see. It's, um, well, you need to explain it because this is the other problem we're having, Russell. Okay. Again, these decisions are made by me. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a search warrant being executed at your residence in Ottawa. Okay. So your wife now knows what's going on. There's a search warrant being executed at the, your residence in Tweed, and your vehicle's been seized. Okay. You and I both know they're going to find evidence that links you to these situations. Okay. You and I both know that the unknown offender, male, A, on Marie France Como's body, is going to be matched to you, quite possibly before the evening's over. Okay. This is a major investigation. The Center of Forensic Science is on call 24 hours a day helping us with this. Mm -hmm. Your opportunity to take some control here and to have some explanation that anybody is going to believe is quickly expiring. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're applying, the investigators now applying for a warrant to search your office. All right. These aren't decisions that we can say yes or no to. This is a practical steps mm -hmm. in an investigation like this. And Russell, Russell, mm -hmm. listen to me for a second, okay? When that evidence comes in, when that DNA match, when that phone rings and somebody knocks on this door, mm -hmm. your credibility is gone, okay? Because this is how credibility works, all right? And I know you're an intelligent person and you probably don't need to hear this explanation, but I also know your mind's racing right now, okay? Because I've sat across a lot of people in your position over the years, mm -hmm. okay? The bottom line is is that as soon as we get that, that piece of evidence that solidifies it, mm -hmm. DNA, okay? As soon as the expert in footwear impressions, the expert in tire impressions calls and says, yes, I've examined those and they're mm -hmm. a match, mm -hmm. it's all over. Because as soon as that happens, where's your credibility? Where's your believability? You're just another, uh, and again, don't take this wrong, okay? But you can see if you step outside this room in your mind and imagine how people are going to view you, okay? If the truth comes out after the clear evidence, is presented to you when you finally go okay I'm screwed now mm -hmm. what are we gonna do so as he faces the biggest decision he's ever had to make in his life just flash back to before he got here I wonder if he knew driving over I may never see the outside again I don't think so, because when he walked into that police station, he was cool, calm, collected, confident. Yeah, but we all put masks on, especially, you know, when you first meet someone, a very thick mask goes on and you act the way you're, you're expected to act. You and know? also, he probably thought that if he didn't go, it would look suspicious. Yes. But he probably thought he could wing it. But now we're over three hours into this interrogation. He's been presented with the evidence. He's basically been, if you like, suckered into confessing because, you know, the footwear thing isn't a real science. The DNA may be if he left any, um, which, we, as we said, we're guessing he did, don't, don't, aren't we? Yeah, there, there would have had to be some DNA there. Yeah. Um, but really what... Um, Detective Staff Sergeant Smith is doing right now is trying to get him to confess and b bless him, he gets his wish, doesn't he? Yeah, it's just so quick though. Yeah. Russell. You know there's only one option. What do you what do you what other option is there? What's the option? Well, I don't think you want the cold blooded psychopath option. I might be wrong. Have you noticed when the detective asked that, he didn't say no? Yeah. 
No protestations. I'm no psychopath. Just crickets. Just staring. Silence. Yeah. Because okay, don't get me wrong, I've met guys who actually kind of enjoyed the notoriety, got off on it, got off on having that label. Bernardo being one of them. I don't see that in you. If I saw that in you, I wouldn't be back in here talking to you, quite frankly. Once again, where have we heard that before? Yep, yeah, we have. Uh, Chris Watts, Graham Coder said it to him. You're a good man, you're a good father. Building up kind of his confidence to, yeah, n- to knock him down again. It's a good strategy, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Smith is going by the playbook here, isn't he? He is. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you got me fooled. I don't know. It fooled me. We can't get fooled again. This is over. And it can have a a bad ending where Jessica's parents continue to wonder where her daughter's lying. And I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's a huge search still underway, and it'll continue. It'll continue until her body's found. That might even happen tonight, for all I know. Once that happens, then I don't know what other cards you would have to play. What are we going to do? Shit, I'm out. Mm-mm-mm. What are we gonna do, Russ? Is Jessica somewhere we can find her easily? Like, is this something where I can make a call and tell somebody to go to a location and they're gonna find her, or is this something where we have to go and, and uh, take a walk? direction are we heading in here? Russ, maybe, maybe this would help. Can you tell me what the issue is you're struggling with? the issue you're struggling with. It's hard to believe this is happening. All the ramifications of what he's done is now starting to hit him, isn't it? It is. I mean, did you hear that? Yeah can't believe this is happening hard to believe this is happening yeah um well he better believe it because he did the crimes yeah now he's got to pay the price yeah but i think what is now dawning on him is what um his wife's gonna think what his superior officers are gonna think what's gonna happen at the base um his reputation his military career it's all these long pauses that he's been doing I think this has all been going through his head and it's been going, uh, you know, G-force speed, hasn't it? Oh, of course it has. Why is that? Why is it hard to believe? (laughs) 
it's just it's just hard to believe. Whose decision was it? And we're going to find out the answer to this anyway. But whose decision was it to issue the uh, the directive to the base personnel? that nobody had to speak to the police and to seek legal counsel before they were questioned. Whoa. Now that did not come up in the research. No, it didn't. So, well, I don't know who would have, well, apart from him, who would have, uh, you know, ordered that directive, but, you know, he seems as though he'd be in a position to do it. I don't think that was... My understanding that direction came from somebody that reports to you. What do you think they're well, going to say, Russ? No, no. What do you think they're going to say? All right, and, and let's let's step back for a second here, okay? I really don't think it benefits you or makes you look any better to start debating the little issues. No, okay? no, but that is news to me. Okay. I have a legal officer that reports to me yeah. who may have given that direction. Okay. But that's the first time I've heard it. If that's true, okay. that's the first time I've heard that. All right, and that may be the case, but how does it look? All right. We're not even dealing with something that's really even evidence because it's not needed. I mean, when, no, you, no, have, but when you have DNA and all this other stuff, that's not even What really was the direction? I don't recall, but it was something along the lines of, of uh, telling the people on the base that they didn't... Uh, they weren't required legally to speak with police, and they should seek legal counsel before they decide to speak. But okay. well, if that was if that was actually said, it would not have been to the base at large. It it may have been to the individual, the uh, the boyfriend, who is the suspect. Okay, that, my understanding, it went out to all personnel. No, absolutely. Maybe not. maybe no, only under your command. I don't know. It did. Okay. okay, that's I, fine. I didn't ever see it. That's fine. Now let's get back to the issue. What's that? So you talk about perception. My only two immediate concerns from a perception perspective are what my wife must be going through right now. Yeah. And the impact this is going to have on the Canadian forces. Both matters he should have considered when going in for the series of Canada's Most Psychotic Brit 2009. Where do we go? Russ, is there anything you want from me? Is there anything you want me to explain? Is there something missing that you're struggling with that I can shed some light on for you? I'm struggling with how upset my wife is right now. Russ, what are you looking for? I'm concerned that they're tearing apart my wife's brand new house. So am I. But if nobody tells them what's there and what's not, they don't have any choice. Computers will be brought to Microsoft in California. They'll be, they'll be picked apart. You can't erase things from computers. It doesn't happen. I'm sure you've seen that. I'm sure. That's pretty common knowledge these days. It just doesn't happen. There's, they sell programs that uh, to try and help people clean their computers of stuff, and our guys are pulling that stuff out all the time. The FBI is pulling that stuff out all the time. Again, said to put the wind up, uh, William said to scare him. Yeah, because even in 2010, police headquarters had IT departments that would have been able to pick his computer apart. Yeah. Yeah, they would have been able, the moment they got his computer, they would have been able to get, you know, most of the stuff off it. So, yeah, it wouldn't have needed got to go to Microsoft, would it? No, we're not all the way to California either. No. This investigation will end up costing no less than $10 million. Easy. They will say no to nothing. Any request this major case manager makes on this case, they've already been told it's approved. Don't even bother asking.
Now, I've been watching Detective Staff Sergeant Smith during this interrogation, and he's sat, been sitting like this a number of times. But this time, I think he's doing it on purpose because he's mirroring Russell Williams' behaviour here. Exa- Classic technique, isn't it? Exactly. I think... But I think now, Williams knows he's yeah. been caught. Yeah. There's no way out. There's no way out at all. You, you could see it in his body language what he just did. His head just went down. He just put his hand to his head and he knows he's defeated. He knows there's no way out. He knows he'll never see the light of day again. He knows he'll, he knows he'll probably never see his wife again. And you know something, I don't feel the least bit sorry for him. No, me neither. So what am I doing, Russ? I put my best foot forward here for you, but I really have. I don't. I don't know what else to do to to make make you understand the impact of what's happening here. Do we talk? I want to um, minimize the impact on my wife. So do I. So how do we do that? Well, we start by telling the truth. Okay. Okay. So where is she? Um, is she close to where she lives? I've got maps of that general area. Which town is she near? Why don't we start there? I'm not sure if you give me a map of, um, that covers Calavard and, uh, the highway. And over to Tweed. I'll show you. Let me see what I got here. I might have something. Is she inside, outside? Okay, now Staff Sergeant Smith is sat there going through his papers, very calm. Well, on the outside. But on the inside, he is punching the air. His adrenaline is up because he's just got a result he wanted. Yeah. He got Williams to admit that Jessica is outside. Therefore, Williams has admitted he knows where Jessica is um, and he knows where about she is. And he's, he just said basically about a map uh, of an area near Tweed. So Jim Smith now is a hero. Um Finally, it took him nearly five hours to do it, but finally broke him down. Of course he did. And he just did a wonderful job. Absolutely brilliant. It's probably the biggest area I have there, Russ. So where am I going on the uh, on here to get to her? In this block here. Okay. So you're pointing to a detailed map of that area, and I'll show you where she is. Okay. Is she close to a road? Yep. All right. Um, is it something where is she is she buried, or is she somewhere where if you walk there you would you would fairly easily see her? It's here. Okay. So she's south of seven. Uh, east of Tweed, mm-hmm. west of 41. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's this road here? Not sure. Neither am I. Okay. I'll be right back, okay? Do you want any water or anything? Sure. Okay, I'll be right back. How long has she been there for? A little over a week. 
was it fairly quick from the time she left? Friday night. Friday night? Yep. So where was she between Thursday night and Friday night? In Tweet. With you? Yep. How long was she alive for? Almost 24 hours, not quite. 24 hours he kept her alive, 24 hours he tortured her, 24 hours he sexually assaulted her. I cannot begin to imagine what both Jessica and Marie went through. I'm sure they went through absolute hell. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a horrible way to die, you know, being completely at the whims of a depraved sex maniac like him, you know. I, I can't imagine. He's pure evil. Yeah. He did show some remorse at the trial, as we said. You know, he did shed some tears. But like most killers, we suspect that the tears were for himself and for his own future and his own outlook. Not f not at all for the victims. It's very rare that a killer cries for the victims, isn't it? The killer never cries for the victims. Especially if they've killed more than one person. Exactly. Russ, you're doing the right thing here. Okay. Well, again, my interest is in um, making my, my wife's life a little easier. And okay. her family as well. Wow. We share that interest. But there's no... Uh, your time in Ottawa is wasted, really. I'll tell you where the memory sick cards are. Where are they? They're in the house there, but... In Ottawa? Yeah. Whereabouts? Um... Some in the camera bag, which they would have found in my office. Mm -hmm. And in the when you walk into the office on the left side, there's a um, a, desk of, a drawers, a set okay. of drawers, like a filing cabinet, wooden IKEA. In one of the top two drawers, and there's a plastic divider. Yeah. And there's uh, inside there, there are two memory cards. Okay. Which are blank, but I'm sure they can be re... Uh, and whose images are on those cards? Uh, well, uh, I've erased them, but I expect uh, you'll be able to draw images of uh, Jessica and I. What about Marie? There may be images on there as well. And the two women from September? Yep. Okay. Do you have those images stored anywhere else? Yeah, there are um, two hard drives in the house in Ottawa. I can draw you a little picture if you like. Sure, do you want to do that now while I'm sure. looking at the map? Okay. <coughs> It's amazing how cooperative he came once he realised his number was up, isn't it? Well, he probably realised there'd be no point in lying because they already knew the truth. Yeah. He may as well just come clean. Yeah, and he started to talk. Now he's started to be very cooperative. He's offering to do things like draw maps and draw pictures and, you know, even point at, you know, even tell him places where things are... And the memory cards... But the way he's doing it is just so cold, There's so no dispassionate. No, there isn't. There's no emotion coming from him. No guilt, no he, remorse. But that's common, isn't it? Well, amongst certain killers, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we've seen evidence of that already. Yeah. I mean, mostly we've looked at people who have killed members of the family, with the exception of Jodie Arias, Stephanie Lazarus. Um, and this case, all the other cases we've looked at have been family members that have been killed or murdered. Yeah, exactly. But, so this uh, one's random. Yeah, but also drawing parallels with the Chris Watts case, he's kind of, he's very, as emotionless as Chris Watts was when talking to police. So yeah. is this this guy is a strange one. As I said, he's a very, very tough nut to crack. I'm, I'm still trying to figure him out. Want anything to eat or anything? 
you there with you. Okay. But I do want to talk to you again. That's the plan. Okay. Right back. You make it up there. somebody running around looking for an actual map but uh, I did the same thing with uh, the Google Maps which I blew them up a little bit more um. this is the this is the biggest of the area well, this might have better parameters for you there's tweet What road is that? Carry? No. South of. Can't read that word. Uh, East Hungerford? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, there it is there. Okay. How far off the road is she? 40 feet. Is she, bare, is she covered with anything? She's she wrapped up. And she's what? on the surface. Just a gray something or other. Cover. Barry, the obvious question I'm going to have for you is when they go there, and they'll be there shortly, mm -hmm. they're going to find her? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be right back. You look like you want to say something. Just that they, this place, my wife, it's been a dream for a better part of a year, so I'm keen to get them what they need and so they can leave her alone. Okay, well, we're going to do our best to keep that as low-key as possible, okay? This is a man who carried out, what, 82 break-ins. Never got caught. So his confidence swelled each time he got away with it because, you know, he broke in, he did what he did, you know, photographed himself doing it and got out presumably without being disturbed or without, you know, disturbing anybody. So, he, we've got to keep front and centre the fact that he never thought he would get caught. No, he thought he was too clever. Yeah. Hence all this concern for his wife, because when he was doing it, his wife was the last thing on his mind. His, the, the primary thing on his mind was the danger and getting his rocks off, wasn't it? Absolutely. He didn't care about his wife, but now he's been caught, he yeah. does. She is the thing that is consuming his, his mind at the moment. Well, he probably knows that once she finds out, she'll divorce him. And you know something, I feel, you know, really sorry for his wife. I've, my heart goes out to her because she, I, I don't think she had any idea that she was living with this monster. She thought she was living with, you know, and she was married to a respectable major in the Canadian forces. And he turns out to be a depraved, you know, sexual deviant with um, those tendencies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And what a nightmare for her. She must. She must feel so guilt. But she shouldn't feel guilty. She shouldn't, shouldn't. She's got nothing to, you know, blame herself for. And she's in a very good job. You know, she's very, very respected, um, you know, figure in the medical community. 
I don't think anyone will judge you. No. I mean, we don't judge her harshly at all. I mean, I'm sure there are some people out there who would think she was complicit, but we don't believe she had any knowledge of what he was doing, do we? No, I think if um, she was involved in any way, I think the police would know by now. I think the more he did it and the more his confidence got up, the better he was at concealing it from his wife. Maybe, you know, he kept all of it in his office, you know, with his military stuff, like he said. You know, she she had no knowledge of this, we don't think, and our hearts go out to her. What do you want to talk about? Because it's uh, pretty wide open now, right? Yeah. What do you want to know? Well, do you want to work forwards or backwards? Doesn't matter. Well, why don't we start with Jessica? Okay. How does that start for you? Um, I saw her in her house on her treadmill. Wednesday night, I guess. Then I noticed she wasn't um, there Thursday. So I got into the house to look around. Then, um, and they left. Noticed she'd come home. So I went back in. Through the uh, back patio door. While she was uh, sleeping. So I woke her up. Didn't um, didn't hit her. She only hit her once. Friday night. Okay. Well, so I raped her in uh, in her house. the car and took her to tweet. And um, spent the day in tweet. And then I hit her um, as we were walking, she thought we were leaving. Hit her on the back of the head. Okay. Is there anything in particular? Well, um, what did they hit on the back of the head do? Well, I was surprised that uh, her her skull gave way. She was there and immediately unconscious. And I strangled her. Okay. Jesus. So he he must have done it from behind. Yeah, and he must have done it with such force. Yeah, if if a skull gave way, if a skull caved in. God, Jesus. Can, can you imagine? What did you hit her with? Flashlight. Okay. In the house or outside the house? In the house. Yeah, they'll find uh, signs of that. Where in the house did this happen? In the main portion, just in front of the fireplace. What do you mean they'll find signs of it? Oh, there's would have been blood. I hadn't expected. I'd expected to knock her out, but obviously generated a lot of blood. What did she bleed onto? The floor. It's just 
tile floor. Okay. Did you clean it up, or did you? I I wiped it up. I know it'll be uh, easily spotted. Well, it makes you think that. Like, if I walked in that house right well, now, would I, I see it? You wouldn't see it not at all. But uh, you know, all right, so it's will uh, will show it. I'm sure. Okay. Um. So when that happened, was she? Did she have clothes on, or was she naked? Yeah, or? She was dressed. Okay. So when we find her, is she going to have those clothes on too? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Marie France uh, Como. There was an open window in the basement of her uh, her house when she was away. I went in there um, a couple of nights before uh, she came home. Looked around. I went back in there uh, late at night when she was at home. She was on the phone in her bedroom. She actually discovered me in the basement. She was trying to get her cat to come upstairs and the cat was in the basement that seen me and was fixated on me in the corner. She couldn't get the cat up so uh, she came downstairs to try and get the cat and uh, I'm not more sure why she uh, came over to me. I guess the cat was staring at me and she was wondering what the cat was staring at. Let's run. So when she spotted me, I um, had the same flashlight. I subdued her. Tied her up. Got her upstairs. suffocated her. Right. Some tape. That has to be one of the worst ways to die with your air holes gradually being cut off. Because um, that's what he did. I think he taped her over the mouth and then he, he cut off her, her air holes by putting duct tape over her nose so she literally couldn't, couldn't breathe. Yeah, I mean, struggling to breathe is the worst way to go. Yeah. So, Marie's death was, was a horrible, every bit as horrible as Jessica's. Left her there. How did you subdue her? And when you say subdued her in the basement, what did you do? Well, I had the same flashlight. And, um, She, she saw me right away, so I was just uh, I hit her a couple of times and round her head, try and knock her out. Didn't, but um, she was bleeding a little bit. And eventually, um, her struggle subdued her. Any blood from, from that struggle? Oh, yeah. No, not, not a whole bunch, but uh, a flashlight did break her skin a couple of times. Okay. What area of the basement did that take place in? I was hiding behind the furnace, so she spotted me right there. Okay. Did she recognize you? No, I had uh, stuff on my face. Um, so then you go upstairs, and you said uh, she suffocated? Well, I suffocated her. I put tape on her um, 
I put tape on her mouth, and then I put tape on her uh, nose and held it there so she couldn't breathe. Okay. Um, what kind of tape was it? Duct tape. What happened to it? tape for any other purposes? No. Okay. Um, did she ever recognize you through this whole episode? No. What did you say you had on your face? I had just a, a cover for my head, just a, you know, a sports you know, pullover type. Like just a little cap kind of thing. Okay. Just a. I can't think you know, uh, wicker or something. And they um, just a headband over my nose and mouth, so it covered most everything but my eyes. Okay. Um. Now yeah, this flashlight. Where is that now? In the house? Yeah. What kind of flashlight is it? It's a red uh, 3DD. Um, I'm not sure what brand it is, but it's a metal, you know, one of these aluminum. It's like a big. Um, I don't remember what brand the little you know, aircraft aluminum flashlights already see on Anyway, it's a big, bigger one of those. Um, did you take anything out of uh, Marie France's house or Jessica Lloyd's house? Uh, yeah, some of their uh, underwear. Okay. That's all. And where is that? Um. The underwear is definitely trophies, isn't it? I mean, you know, he, he was doing, the, I think he was taking underwear from the start when he st first started breaking in. So, you know, they were obviously trophies to him. Yeah, killers usually take something as a trophy to remember them by. Yeah, not just for self-gratification though, but it, it demonstrates, you know, the the abuser, the killer, the, the intruder's power over their victim or the power that they perceive that they have over their victim. Yeah, most of it is about power and control. Yeah. So he enjoyed every second of taking them. And, you know, I kind of think in his mind that, you know, Marie, certainly Marie and Jessica's underwear was reward for him, a job well done. That's how these psycho bastards think, isn't it? Yeah, but he is sick. Yeah, definitely. Very sick. It's in some boxes in the basement here in Ottawa, in that rec room. So we just moved in, so there are boxes everywhere. So on the same side as the furnished room, sort of in the back against the wall. Okay, what do the other boxes look like? Um, I think one's a scanner, the box for my scanner. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all right next to each other, so a quick look through the boxes there. Will How much underwear is in those boxes? Um, uh, probably 60 pieces or so. All women's? Yeah, 60 pieces of theirs. Of whose? Of Jessica's and uh, Mary France. Wow, so he's got s at least 60 pairs just from Jessica and from Marie. How many bloody pairs has he got from the other, like, 82 or 80 that he broke into? Well, I saw a few pictures and uh, he's got quite a hell of a lot. 
Do, are we talking boxes? We do we do we like spread out over the bed? Yeah, I think the police probably did that. But if it's boxes, that's something. It's good, you know. His wife's gonna find hard to miss, isn't it? Unless he's got them somewhere you know, else, se- secreted somewhere. You know, really, um, you know, hidden away from where his wife isn't aware. But if it's boxes of bloody underwear, then you know that's gonna be kind of difficult, isn't it? Well, it'd be difficult to explain if she found them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know how big his house in Tweed was, or house in Ottawa, wherever he was stashing these. I'm guessing Tweed, because that's where he committed the, most of the break-ins, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm I'm not sure how big that house is, but um, you know, if it is a big house, then maybe it's got a few hidey holes he used, and maybe a basement. Yeah, it could be. So you took sixty pieces from between the two of them. Yeah. Okay. It's a. All right. Um, and they're in a, like when you talk about a scanner, is it a computer scanner box? Well, a computer scanner is up in the office, and its box is down in the basement. So okay, it's inside that box. Does any of the underwear in those boxes belong to anyone other than Marie Franz or uh, or Jessica? Um, yeah, there's some from each of the other two women. Okay. Uh, why don't we talk about those two women? Mm-hmm. Um, so the first one happened on the 16th, and I don't know why I can't recall their names, but uh, the lady that was uh, lived closer to you. No, Lori was closer to me. Okay. So the first, uh, the first one, mm-hmm. I had just spotted her. From our boat, actually. And I got into the house while she was uh, asleep. Noticed that she was alone. And uh, just hit her with my hand while she was sleeping. Subdued her. Mostly just my weight on top of her. Um, had her take off her pajamas, took some pictures, took some of her underwear and left. And the other woman? Same kind of deal. Went in through the back of the house. She was sleeping in her, um, not in her bedroom, but in her, you know, in front of the TV. Very much the same story. Anything different about that story? I mean, yeah, pretty much the same story and exactly the same story are two different things, right? Yeah, no, uh, not much different at all. Um, I did have the flashlight that time. I hit her with a flashlight. Didn't think it would knock her out. Didn't. So, and I subdued her with my weight. Took off her clothes, took some pictures, and left. Why do you think these things happen? Have you spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know the answers. And I'm pretty sure the answers don't matter. Well, let me let me ask you this: Did you like or dislike these women? I didn't know any of them. I had met Maddie Franz that one time in that in our uh, airplane. Okay. No, I guess, I guess when, yeah, when you're going through these things, um, are you? Well, well, let me let's talk about Jessica because she was there with you for the whole day, right? Mm-hmm. 
what kind of feelings were you experiencing while you were with her that day? Oh, she was a very nice girl. Can you tell me why you killed her? Right. Do you know why you killed her? Well, I think I killed her because I knew that, uh, her story would be recognized. Her story would be recognized? How do you mean? Well, because she knew I was taking pictures. Mm-hmm. So because of the uh, two uh, stories in Tweed, that would have been a fairly, yeah, been quite obvious. So if you didn't take pictures, what would you have done with her? I don't know. I mean, she's at your house, right? Um, well, let, let me ask you this. Is it uh, two lived, right, and two died? What's, what was the difference in your mind between... Well, the, uh, you know, the attention the first two got um, was very much fo focused on obviously, or for obvious reasons, uh, the pictures I took. So anybody else telling stories about pictures, right, would have been a fairly straight line. Okay, but when, when this thing happened with Marie Franz, there was was, did you believe that you were already a suspect for what happened in Tweet? No. So what, what were you concerned about? Well, because... Um, I was pretty sure that, uh, you know, that she was serving military, right? Mm -hmm. It would have been, uh, it would have been difficult for investigators to ignore that connection. Yeah, that would have linked him to the murder, and it would, you know, it would have made him something of a suspect, but not a major suspect. It would, I mean, CFB Trenton's huge, as we said earlier on, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it employs a lot of people. Of course, it does. So, you know, there's bound to be, you know, people around that area that work at and serve at CFB Trenton. So, you know, any one of them could have been linked to it. So I tend not to believe this. I think he killed her because he got off on it. He just doesn't want to tell uh, Detective Staff Sergeant Smith that. Yeah, so he's trying to come up with another alternative yeah. as to um, why. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe if he'd have carried on then yeah, the, the, it, it would have gotten down to him. But, you know, he was stupid. He made careless mistakes when he murdered um, Jessica. Yeah, exactly. So maybe if he hadn't have done them, he would have still been at liberty for, you know, enough time to carry out, you know, more murders. So, you know, I'm just so glad he's off the streets. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, well, let's go back to Jessica then, okay? Um, you see her on the Wednesday night, okay? On her treadmill? Mm -hmm. How do you see her? She was in the basement, window wide open, on her treadmill. So I drove by. Okay. Did you, did you stop to look at the house or? How, do, how does that catch your eye as you drive by? Well, I was 
looking to see who was who was where. Don't know that area very well, so I was just keeping my eyes open. Okay. So you spot her on the Wednesday? Yeah. Um, do you just keep on going or do you just stop and take a closer look that no. night or anything? No? I could go. Okay. And you went back on the Thursday night, right? Yeah. So you go back on the Thursday night and you went you went into the house before she came home? <coughs> he must be somewhat agitated here because he's got up. Yeah, that is a sign of agitation. Yeah, he's. this must be making him feel uncomfortable. Um, I don't know whether it's remorse over Jessica's death or um, embarrassment of what he's about to reveal or whatever, but something's definitely bothering him, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's any guilt over Jessica's death. No, probably not. Yeah, she was out. Okay. Um, yeah, she was out. Got in through the kitchen window. It's unlocked. Everything else was locked. So you're in there doing what? Looking around, looking around to see who lived in the house. It was just her. Okay. And then what do you do? Well, I left the house. for a little bit to see if she was alone. She was. And I went in when she went back to sleep. I just went to sleep. Okay. So you go in, she's sleeping, and what do you do? Well, I, I snuck up to the side of her bed, expecting to uh, try to knock her out. She woke up, but she did as I said, so I didn't hit her. What did you say? Lie down on your tummy. Okay. She did. I tied her up. What tie her up with? Some uh, rope I brought. So she's on her stomach. How are you tying her up? Just tying her hands behind her back. Okay. She got clothes on at that point? Mm hmm. What kind of clothes? S sweats. All right. Tie her hands behind her back, and then then what happens? I took her clothes off. Okay. Now he knows exactly the hole he is in right now, and he's in a very deep hole. But a part of me wonders whether he's getting off on relating this story to Detective Staff Sergeant Smith. You know, whether a part of him is kind of enjoying reliving what he did. Oh, I'm sure he is, because that is what people like that do. They do get off on yeah. what they've done and also recounting what they did. I mean, you know, it's certainly not evident. There's no visible evidence of him kind of getting any enjoyment out of it, but I'm sure, you know, Mark, Chase, Greg... And Scott would disagree. They'd see loads of evidence. Yeah, and also he's probably getting off on it inside. Possibly, yeah. But while kind of I've been watching him going over the details of 
you know, how he found these women and how he murdered them, whether a part of him is actually getting off on it because, you know, with killers, certainly people who become killers like he did, I don't think he was born to kill. I think he became a killer and he made himself into a killer. Yeah, but... but um, you know, with killers, you get you get this, you know, kind of satisfaction, don't you? Yeah, you do, but also people kill for revenge or maybe had a problem with women in the military or women in general. We don't know. He'll never tell us the truth. I think it's fetish-related. I think, you know... He wanted some sort of power over them by first sealing their underwear, and then he took it to the next level with sexual assault, and then... The final level. The final level of murder. And as we said before, how much worse would it have got? It, you know, it would have still been murder, but it probably would have got more depraved. Um, and more probably, gruesome. Or, or more gruesome, yeah, or more sadistic. Um, because if you hold someone for 24 hours and torture them, you're not only a psychopath, you're a sadist. Yeah. 